Papa Bell was possibly the fastest man to play the game of baseball. Bell was born May 17, 1903, and he was certainly one of the fastest base runners in the Negro League. Bell hit over .400 in several seasons. Quincy Troupe, the manager of the Cleveland Buckeyes, claimed that Bell always ran like he stole something. Later, Bell went to work for an independent packing company, making $21.20 a week. Then the St. Louis Stars of the Negro National League signed Bell for $90 a month as a left-hand pitcher in 1922. Bell led the team in several titles, 1928, 1930, and 1931. Bell, like most baseball stars, moved from team to team, going where he found the most money. As time progressed and baseball started to integrate, he got older and his good playing days were behind him. In 1972, Bell was inducted in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. He died March 7, 1991. Born on December 21, 1911, Josh Gibson was one of baseball's greatest catchers of all time. As an American catcher in baseball's Negro Leagues, he played for the Homestead Grays from 1930 to 1931, Pittsburgh Crawfords from 1932 to 1936, Homestead Grays from 1937 to 1939, 1942 and 1946. Josh Gibson was one of baseball's greatest catchers and powerful hitters in the history of any league. He was also known as the Black Babe Ruth. He departed Earth on January 20th, 1947 from a stroke. He is still best known as the greatest catcher of all time. Leroy Satchel Page was known to be one of the greatest pitchers baseball has ever seen. Page was born in Mobile, Alabama to John and Lula Page, and when he was the seventh of 12 children. Page earned the nickname Satchel by working for the train stations and carrying passengers' bags for money. He would carry so many bags that he would look like a walking satchel bag. He started playing baseball at eight years old, but developed most of his skills in an industrial school for children where he would send away for shoplifting. When Page was released, he played with his older brother Wilson on the semi-pro Mobile Tigers team. In 1926, he received his first big break and was signed to the Southern Negro League's Chattanooga Black Lookouts. He started earning only $50 a month his first year, but increased to 250 by the next year. Page left the Lookouts and joined the Birmingham Black Barons of the National Negro League. Two years later, Page was set the record for the National Negro League for the single-season strikeouts with 184 and 17 strikeouts in just one game. Page moved around the league a little before joining the Pittsburgh Crawfords, which was believed to be Page's career goal in the National Negro League. After he <coughs> moved around the National Negro League, he ventured off to play out of the country in places like Mexico and Dominican Republic. 1940, he returned to the league and signed with Kansas City Monarchs and would become the highest paid athlete in the world due to the war. In 1947, when Jackie Robinson was chosen to be the first player of the major leagues, it is reported that Page was better but just wanted too much money. His dream came true July 7, 1948, where he would sign with the Cleveland Indians for 40000 just for three months and go on later that year to win a pennant for them. Page used to say, maybe I'll pitch forever, and did so by going from team to team and continuing to do what he loved most. At the age of 60 years old, Page decided that he would retire and would never return to the mound again. After his undying baseball career, he became the first African American to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame's Negro Wing in 1971. Unfortunately, in 1982, his life ended a month before his birthday, and he was buried in Page Island on the Forest Hill Memorial Park Cemetery in Kansas City.